Uh, joining me now is Matt Berry from ESPN. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you take a lot of time out of your busy day. No problem. Um, so a lot of people uh, might not know this, I know this, uh, you used to work in Dallas, and so you've been kind of moving around. You're now uh, in Bristol. Like, what is that transition like? Well, you know, when you work at a place like Dallas, you're, you're in a, a top five market, and you're covering the Dallas Cowboys, and you're covering big time high school football and the Mavericks. When I was in Dallas, the Mavericks won the NBA championship, the Rangers went back to back to back World Series. And so you get accustomed to covering big time sports. And then when you make the transition to network TV in a place like ESPN, when you, when you work in a market like Dallas, and you're covering Super Bowls and NBA Finals and World Series, it really gets you acclimated to what it's like to do uh, big time sports and, and, and big market TV. So it was a good experience for me, not only. Uh, to be in Dallas and, and get around franchises like that, but it got me ready for the next step, which was ESPN. So when you finally get to ESPN, you finally get uh, to Bristol, what is that like? Is it kind of a little star? It's daunting. Little it's, it's campus. It's like a college, and it's huge. I spent the first two weeks just trying to figure out where to go to the bathroom. Like, where are the bathrooms? Where's the cafeteria? Where's this? Where, where do I throw my garbage? The first couple of weeks, you're just learning how to live at ESPN, and then you're walking around the hallways, and you're seeing Jerry Rice, and you never know who's going to be around the corner, and Ray Lewis, and all these people you grow up watching on TV, and so it's it's human nature to be a little awestruck, and then you understand, well, you know what, you're you're them now, you're with them now, that's your job, and so once you get over the first couple of weeks of acclimating, and I got there at the end of winter, and I'm from Arizona, so the winters are awful. Uh, once I got used to just being in the building, it's it's TV, it's it's it's, it's, it's the same camera, the light's still red. The teleprompter's still there, the TV's still there, so it's, it's just TV again. Okay, so you're now at ESPN, um, obviously a much bigger field, and so mm -hmm. you're actually with On the Road, mm -hmm. um, coming here to Stillwater. What is your impression on Stillwater so far? Well, I love Stillwater. I, I worked in Oklahoma. My first TV job was down in Lawton, Oklahoma, um, and, and I, was, I worked here when Les Miles was the head coach at Oklahoma State, and obviously Stoops was still at OU. So I'm very familiar with the area, what football means to this area. Uh, I saw Les build this thing up to where it was when he had Rashawn Woods, guys like that that played football here. Tatum Bell was on the teams when I was here. So I saw kind of the birth of where this place was headed. And then when he went to LSU, I was here when he, when he left for LSU and Coach Gundy got hired. And so really saw this program take that next step to national relevance. And if you look at this program, they're looking for their third 9-0 start in school history. They were that way in 2011. They're at that point again this year. And so just to see how this program has been built and to get into the national conversation when you're looking at a program like oh, you just down the road that's one of the best programs in history. So it's, it's, it's very impressive how Oklahoma State's been able to do this. And so it's got to be it's got to be a little bit hectic. I mean, not knowing where you're going the next week, you can't really prepare uh, necessarily for it, right? I make the joke that it's the end of August and you're going to wake up and it's going to be Christmas. And here we are a few weeks away from Thanksgiving. If football season's a sprint, but it's the best sprint in the business because you, do, you don't get it in any other sport. You don't get four months like you do in college football with anything else. And so it, it is hectic, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, so besides Stillwater, I know this is probably your favorite place. Um, where, I mean, what other great places have you been? Like, what, what experience have you had? We went to St. John's University in Collegeville, Minnesota. Was that it was this Division year? Three. Yeah, we did that this year. And they brought, it was, it was a St. John's versus St. Thomas. It's Division Three rivalry that's been around since, since 1900. And they brought 6,000 fans yeah. to the show at 6 a.m. on a Saturday. 6,000 That's a college game day size crowd. And the energy that they poured into that, it's something that, that, that myself and my co-anchor, Sarah, we'll, we'll never forget. It, it was an incredible experience. And, and that's, that's one of those things that when you go, you're like, this is the best job on the planet. Last question, we'll let you back to your work. Um, what do you think, just predictions for the rest of football season? The, the, the schedule's backloaded. And what you see today as we sit here is going to be completely different than what you see in the final week of the season. Keep this in mind. I've been pointing this out all week on ESPN. Ohio State opened up ranked 16th last year in the first college football playoff. They didn't crack the top four to the final one. So what you see today and what you see now means nothing. But all I can predict is chaos. It's going to be a fun ride. So there's definitely hope for Oklahoma State fans. There, so. Look, we beat TCU and you're in the thick of it. Win <laughs> Bedlam and you're really in the thick of it. All right. Thank you so much. You bet. I don't take any more of your time. I really appreciate it. No problem. It. Take care.